Good Notes 5 emerged victorious in my showdown of the best note taking softwares. Therefore, as many of you bought Good Notes after seeing my video, I thought it's only fit that I take you through some of the hidden tools of Good Notes in greater detail. So starting off, we have the live collaboration feature. To use this feature, you need to go to the selected document, press the little arrow, then select collaborate, and then turn on link sharing. And that's pretty much it. Now this would allow you to collaborate with other people on the same document. I like to think of it as Google Docs, but for good notes. If you want to access all your shared documents in one convenient spot, then you can click the shared tab at the bottom of the screen and everything's available there. The next features are the pen tools. If you select the pen tool, you can choose from a selection of three different pen styles. There's fountain pen, there's ball pen, and there's the brush pen. The fountain pen is a bit like an ink pen and it's pressure sensitive, so applying more pressure would therefore produce a thicker line. And in the setting, there's actually an option where you can choose the sharpness and pressure sensitivity for the fountain pen. Next up, we have the ball pen, which is pretty much what I like to use all the time for making notes, as it produces a more consistent and thicker line, and I don't have to worry about the pressure that I'm applying. And then finally, you have the brush pen, which um, strangely doesn't actually look like a brush at all, but it produces a similar kind of line to the fountain pen. So moving on to the shape tools. So you can obviously select the dedicated you know, shape tool to draw your shapes, uh, but let's be honest, you probably already knew that. But there's actually a setting there that allows you to draw and hold to produce a shape. And this means that when you are using the pen tool, you don't have to manually switch to the shape tool in order to draw a shape. Simply hold after drawing and it will automatically convert your sketch into a fully you know, proper shape. And then you can change the shape size by dragging in or dragging out. And GoodNotes is also able to recognize some basic mathematical graphs too, like a quadratic or an exponential or logarithmic graphs. Um, although there isn't, there is an issue. I've noticed that often makes my triangle look like a circle, which is a bit annoying. So make sure it's a proper triangle uh, for the software to actually recognize it. There's also a setting which allows you to fill, you know, fill color, which automatically colors in your shape after you've drawn it. So next up we have flashcards. Now flashcards are arguably pretty cool. So to make a flashcard, you need to create a new notebook, select the paper type as GoodNotes standard, uh, and then choose the flashcard design and click create. Write your question on the top card and your answer in the bottom. And obviously if it's like, you know, any other uh, regular document, you can use diagrams, pictures, whatever you wanna do. And if you want to create a new flashcard, basically pull to add a page as if you would add a page normally. Once you've created your flashcards, click on the three dots at the top right of the screen uh, and then select study flashcard. Then you do your, you know, your big brain thinking and try and answer the question. Um, tapping the question would then reveal the answer. This method of learning uses space repetition to learn, which can be really useful, as Ali says. So I've already showed you in previous videos that you can open two GoodNotes documents at the same time, side by side. And by now you probably already know that you can open two instances of the same document at the same time. But did you know you can actually open three instances of the same document at the same time? Look, I don't know why you would want to do that, uh, but maybe you're, not, you know, you're a cool kid, you want to show off to your friends or you're that special someone, well then you can. But arguably what's more useful is that you can actually copy things over to different GoodNotes documents from one to the other, you know, by window to window. And this is also applicable to folder management, which can make transferring folders to different you know, places a lot more easier. Next up is handwriting to text. So when you've written something down, but you want to see it converted to text, it's actually really easy to do. All you need to do is click the lasso tool, select the text, then click convert, then click share and then copy and paste. All right, fine. Maybe it's not as easy as I thought, but at least it's free. So let me show you something else that you probably didn't know, but if you actually open another app on the side, like Google Chrome or Google Docs or something, you can actually select your handwritten text and drag it over and then it automatically converts it into text. Look, if you haven't already liked the video, like what are you doing? It's not even me asking, just do it for the YouTube algorithm. Do what it says now. All right, so we're gonna head back to the cheeky lasso tool that I showed you um, early on, which houses some other nifty little features. So first of all, you don't actually have to select the entire text. Selecting part of the text will, you know, select everything. And this can be really useful when the text is in a cramped location and you don't wanna select everything around it, but you only wanna select a certain portion. So once you've selected the text, you can then take a screenshot uh, and even resize it, which can be quite handy when you're trying to fit in maybe something into a, a small area or maybe enlarge it. And you can also change the color if you didn't like the original one. So there's quite, quite a few things there. Next up are the undo and the redo gestures. Now obviously you have two arrows at the top where you can undo and redo, but there's a few hacks that you can use that may shave off a few seconds of time equaling more productivity. And as Alia showed, that is very important. 
So to undo, you can do a two finger double tap or a three finger swipe to the left. And if you want to redo, you can do a three finger swipe to the right. So when we switch to the erase tool, we can erase something. Yeah, mind boggling, I know. When we're done, we have to switch back to the previous tool manually or double tap on the Apple Pencil, which obviously consumes too much time for the modern day, modern day man. So there's a nifty little feature that is called Auto Deselect Eraser. It basically reverts to the previous tool automatically once you've finished. And that, you know, saves a bit of time. The next feature is the Zoom tool. Now, the reason I love this is, you know, I love using it all the time. Basically, it zooms into a certain area of the page and allows you to write as big or as small as you want. And the text automatically displays in the right location. And normally, you have to keep, you know, zooming in and writing and then zooming out, which can sometimes be, you know, quite annoying. So if you're doing a continuous piece of writing, then it can actually be pretty useful to, you know, go line by line and it automatically does that for you. My name's Devify. I hope you guys have a good day. And I'm out.